So properties, physical properties. We're going to talk um, about different kinds, different categories of organic chemicals, and alkanes are the first one. And for each of these categories, we're going to talk about physical properties, and chemical properties. So this is an, and nomenclature. So we did the nomenclature part. Now we're going to talk about physical properties. So some of the physical properties that we're interested in are solubility and another one is density. Solubility is what does this dissolve in? What is it soluble in? So the alkanes, if you remember um, polar and nonpolar molecules, the alkanes like um, Oh, darn it. Okay, so here's ethane. Zoom recording. Okay. So here I'm drawing very messy ethane. Does that look like it would be polar or nonpolar? Do you remember polarity of molecules? Do you remember learning about polarity of molecules? Okay, there we've got something. Okay, a polar molecule is one that has a more positive end and a more negative end. And usually when you look at the structure, it's lopsided. It's not real symmetrical. This is very symmetrical, isn't it? There's two carbons and they're surrounded with hydrogens and you can see that there's not one end that's different than the other. All of the alkanes are nonpolar. Carbon and hydrogen's electronegativity difference is not that great and these molecules are so symmetrical that they are nonpolar. So the polarity is what determines what these things dissolve in. It determines their solubility. And the general a uh, little phrase that we use is like dissolves like. What does that mean? Well, that means that polar things are going to be so soluble in polar solvents. Nonpolar things will tend to be soluble in nonpolar solvents. They're comfortable in something that acts like they do. It really comes down to the intermolecular forces. Um, something like water, water is very polar and it has hydrogen bonding. And so the forces between the molecules that hold it together are very strong. In order for something to dissolve in the water, it has to push in and break those and push into the water. And if something like ethane that is only nonpolar, it has um, London dispersion forces, van der Waals forces, induced dipoles, whatever term you used in your class, the very, very weakest intermolecular force. It cannot push into water and get along with water. The water essentially squeezes it out. And we see this with um, things like oil and water. Oil is also nonpolar. It doesn't mix with water. You can take that Italian salad dressing and shake it for an hour. As soon as you set it down, the oil is going to start separating. Because the water molecules are so tight with each other. They're so attracted to each other that they push everything else out. Um, you can also think of it as um, speaking a common language. So my ancestors came from Sweden. My husband's ancestors came from Japan. So I'm going to pick on those two ethnic groups. So if you got a bunch of Swedes who only spoke Swedish and a bunch of Japanese who only spoke Japanese in a room, would they mingle? No. No, you'd have a clump of people speaking Swedish here and a clump of people speaking Japanese here. Now, you might have more than one group of Japanese, but they're not going to talk to each other. They don't understand each other. So if that helps you to remember, the, the sol solvent and the solute need to be able to talk to each other. They need to be like each other. So alkanes and cycloalkanes are nonpolar. That means that they will be soluble in nonpolar solvents. Hexane is a great nonpolar solvent. It is an alkane. They will be insoluble in polar solvents, such as water or alcohol. And so one of the things that um, alkanes are used for, one example is that protective wax coating that they put on fruit. 
now living in Reedley. Uh, we've got these fruit packing houses all over the place, and some of them put a wax coating on the fruit. It's not just to make it look shiny and pretty. It also helps to protect the fruit, but it repels water from the outside, and it also retains water on the inside so the fruit won't dry out as much. So that's <clears throat> a little about solubility of alkanes. Um, density. Uh, alkanes are less dense than water. So um, that's not very good formatting. The densities of alkanes and cycloalkanes are approximately 0.6 to 0.8 grams per milliliter. And water is about one gram per milliliter. So if you have these two things together, the alkanes are going to float on the water. And you can probably remember that by thinking of, like, oil. Oil contains a lot of alkanes, and the oil's going to float on the water. In the salad dressing, it's always the oil that goes to the top. They spill crude oil, you know, in the gulf, and it floats at the top. It doesn't sink to the bottom, and it doesn't dissolve. It floats, and then it just spreads out and forms a thin layer. Um, boiling points. Boiling points are interesting. Ooh, move the stool. Made a lot of noise. Um, the boiling points are going to increase with the size of the chain. So let's look at this uh, green line. Well, we can look at the green line, and we can look at the purple line. Let's look at the purple line. Purple line, unbranched alkanes. So here's four carbons. That would be butane, five carbons, pentane, hexane, heptane, octane, nonane, decane. Their boiling points increase as their size increases. And it's almost a straight line. It's really nice. We love to see trends like that. Why do the, why do the larger ones have higher boiling points? So this pulls, goes back to general chemistry as well. When, when something goes from the liquid state to the gas state, when it boils, it has to break those intermolecular forces that are holding it together as a liquid. The only reason that liquids are liquid at all is because of the intermolecular forces, the attractions between the molecules. The stronger they are, the more energy you have to put into them to get them to break loose. More energy means higher temperature. So if they have stronger intermolecular forces, they're going to have higher boiling points. Why does a larger one have stronger intermolecular forces? Well, part of it is you could think of it as surface area. Trends like this, if you understand the thought behind them, which, you know, we're not making this up, we're just trying to explain it. If you can reason out um, why it is, then it's much easier to remember. Um, let's just, you know, let's make just another, let's make a whiteboard. Okay, so here I've got one, oh, let's not do that. Here I've got one molecule. That's not very good either. Here I've got a little molecule and a little molecule. And over here I've got two big molecules, really ugly molecules. Alkanes have induced dipole forces. Van der Waals forces, London dispersion forces. There are names for the same names different names for the same thing. I wish they could just decide on what to call them. They have the same kind of forces. Um, but in order for the forces to attract each other, the molecules have to be near each other. And it comes down to surface area. Oh, let's, can you see that? So we've got surface area. So that one's got a little bit of surface area, and this one's got a lot of surface area. Think of Velcro. Okay, if you have two little Velcro dots, so maybe, um, have you seen those Velcro walls? 
those bounce house things where you put on a Velcro suit and you bounce and you bounce and you jump up on the wall and the Velcro holds you up on the wall and you have to peel yourself off. And yet you may have Velcro on your shoes, a little strip of Velcro. Would that hold your body up on the wall? No. What's the difference? Surface area. Okay, so the way to remember this trend in boiling points, small molecules, little piece of Velcro, doesn't hold together very strongly. Large molecules, bigger piece of Velcro, they hold together stronger, stronger intermolecular forces. In order to rip them apart, you have to add more energy, you have to raise the temperature. So larger alkanes boil at higher temperatures. How can I, I need to get back to what I was doing? Um, unsub, unsubstituted cycloalkanes, that's this green line, their boiling points are going to be a little bit higher. Not a lot, but a little bit higher. And again, that's because of more of a surface area kind of thing. Their, their forces of attraction are a little bit greater. Substituted, um, no, we're not doing substitute, branching. So here's the branched, this is the blue one. When they get branched, then that reduces the, do the boiling point. Because you think of, of two straight pieces, and they can get really close together and have more surface area than if one has kinks and things in it. So by branching, they have less force of attraction. When you make rings of them, then they get a little bit more because the, you would put the, the faces of the rings together and you could get more surface area than from a straight chain. Any questions about boiling point trend? <laughs>